Amazon has recently just updated the status of Metroid Prime 4 for the Nintendo Switch, but it's not what you think it is and I want to explain it to you guys. Phil Spencer did an interesting interview talking about the future of Xbox, stop me if you've heard about the future of Xbox before, and I definitely want to talk about some things from it. And finally, Nintendo Switch sales are, well, just on absolute fire, there's really not much else to say about it. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and hey, you made it to 2021, it's a brand new year, a brand new you maybe, just be grateful that you made it through 2020, and hopefully 2021 brings a lot of cool stuff to you guys, but without any further ado, let's kick off 2021 by talking about what's going on in the world of video games. So one of the most anticipated games for the Nintendo Switch is of course Metroid Prime 4, which is a game we really haven't heard a whole hell of a lot about. There was that little teaser trailer at an E3 event and then we learned that the game had pretty much been scrapped and started over from scratch. So Metroid Prime 4 is a game that I wouldn't expect to see anytime soon. But yesterday, if you pre-ordered the game through Amazon, you got a very interesting email. Amazon sent out an email yesterday saying that on January 2nd, 2023, you will have Metroid Prime 4 in your hands for the Nintendo Switch and a lot of people got very excited about this I had lots of DMS asking me to talk about it But it's really not what it seems with this situation because well, this is not a confirmation of any sort Basically what is going on here is that Amazon used to have a previous release date of December 31st of 2020 Which is something that we call a placeholder date Basically when a company wants you to be able to pre-order a game or a game gets announced that doesn't have a release date websites such as Amazon Best Buy, GameStop, will put up an arbitrary release date of the last date of the year. So that way, if the game does get a release date during that year, they can change it. Or if something ends up happening and the game doesn't get a release date, they can also change it for something further down the road. So basically, the old release date for this game was, like I said, December 31st of 2020, but now that day has come and gone. So Amazon has basically just updated their website by adding in a new release date. Well, RGT, why does it say January 2nd of 2020? Why wouldn't it be the last day of 2021 or 2022? Well, it actually is. If you look on the website, the release date is now December 31st of 2022 for Metroid Prime 4, and they're basically factoring in shipping with this game because I guess you won't get it on release day, which is something that sometimes Amazon does and sometimes Amazon doesn't do. I don't really know what sort of decides that I would think a big first party Nintendo game would get a release date shipping, but that's what's going on with this situation. Like I said, I had a lot of you guys hit me up asking me about this you know was this a sort of release date i had so many people hitting me up about december 31st of 2020 being the release date for metroid prime 4 and i was just like no that's i'm not that's not the case here basically this is just a placeholder date amazon has just updated their placeholder date i'm sure we'll hear about some stuff between then and now about metroid prime 4 i don't think it's going to be a 2021 game but i also don't think it's necessarily going to be released on january 2nd 2023 so just wanted to clarify that for you guys don't think that amazon has leaked anything or anything like that this is basically just business as usual Next up, Slick Philly Spencer, or Phil Spencer as he's known in the professional world, I'm not really a professional person, so I will call him Slick Philly Spencer, recently did an interview with Major Nelson of Xbox talking about the future of Xbox, because that's one thing that Xbox always loves to talk about is the future of the company. Never really the present or the immediate future, it's always more so down the road with this company, but there were some interesting tidbits of information that I wanna talk about in this video. So the first thing that I found interesting was that he emphasized the importance of 2021 for the xbox brand because essentially this is the 20th year celebration of xbox you got to remember the original xbox hit the marketplace way back in 2001 20 years ago god time is flying man i'm feeling old but yes they want to do some sort of celebration for the xbox brand in 2021 but he obviously didn't elaborate on that because he was more concerned about the future of xbox and he went on to say some interesting things about the future of xbox so Phil basically says that they have sort of a tier system going on with the future of Xbox, and there are three different tiers that are worth talking about. So first tier is Horizon Zero, as it's being dubbed, and this is stuff coming within the next year to the Xbox brand. And then when it comes to two to three years into the future, that is Horizon One. And finally, there's Horizon Two, which is talking about things that will be coming to the Xbox brand potentially in like three to 10 years. Yes, they actually said three to 10 years. Now, most of these things 
things could change. Obviously, technology is always changing. So Horizon 2, you know, it's really just sort of a pipeline dream. But of course, you know, things could come from this. And backwards compatibility was obviously going to be one of these things that he talked about because they want to increase backwards compatibility. I will be interested to see sort of how that goes into play. But he then went on to say that there are some things that he is incredibly excited about and they will be talked about in the next year or two for the Xbox brand. According to Phil Spencer in this interview, they might get people as excited as something like xCloud did or Game Pass did for the Xbox brand today. Now that's all well and good. Obviously a company needs to focus somewhat on the future because the future will be here before you know it. So it's good to think about things in advance. But the problem is I feel like I have heard about the future of Xbox for like so many years now and a year comes and goes and it's always kind of like the same stuff. Oh, just wait a little bit longer. We're going to show you some stuff. Just wait a little bit longer. The problem with this is I feel like people are going to get impatient. There are already a lot of people that are already impatient when it comes to the Xbox brand and they want to see actual games. They want to see things now. They want to see things for the immediate future, not the long-term future, because you've heard about the long-term future for so long. And I'm not an Xbox hater or anything like that. I actually play my Xbox Series X more than I play my PlayStation 5, because that's what I purchased all of my third-party games on. So my Xbox Series X is getting a lot more playtime than my PlayStation 5 is. But once those big PlayStation 5 games start coming in 2021, games like Ratchet & Clank, Gran Turismo 7, Horizon to God of War, you know, the new God of War game. It's like, what is Xbox going to do to sort of combat that? We already know that there's not a lot coming in 2021 right now as far as big AAA games are concerned. You know, there's the medium that's coming out, Halo Infinite, of course, but we sort of had to see what's going to happen with Halo Infinite. But I'm just worried that Xbox maybe focuses too much on the future and doesn't think about the present. They sort of just keep you know, putting ideas out there and keep making all these ideas. And it's almost like a cyberpunk situation where you keep thinking about the future and you keep wanting to add more stuff, but you're not looking at what is happening right now. So I don't know. I hate interviews like this because I don't care necessarily about the, you know, three to 10 year plan. Like who the hell knows what's going to happen in three to 10 years. I want to know what's going to happen this year. I want to know what games are coming to the Xbox this year and what you're going to do for the system in this year. So once again, if you're a diehard Xbox fan, and the future looks bright, but the immediate future, maybe not so much. And finally, the Nintendo Switch. You ever heard of this thing before? I might have talked about it like once or twice on the channel. It seems like it's a pretty popular system. You know, after the failures of the Wii U, Nintendo seemed to have done a really good job rebounding with this system, bringing something sort of new to the marketplace. And it seems like a lot of people really enjoy the Nintendo Switch, the vast library of games, the things you can do with it. Of course, there are shortcomings with it, but it seems like the vast majority of people really enjoy the Nintendo Switch. And like I said at the start, Nintendo Switch sales are on fire because it appears it appears that it is now neck and neck with the Nintendo 3DS in terms of overall system sales. Now this information is coming to us from VGCharts.com. I know they are sort of just, you know, guessing about things with estimates, but usually on the hardware side of things, they do a pretty solid job. The game side of things, I don't really know about that. But as far as hardware is concerned, they usually are pretty much on the nose with this. And VG Charts is basically reporting that the Nintendo Switch has sold roughly 75.125 million systems halfway through the month of December. Now the Nintendo 3DS sold total in its life cycle 75.7 million units. So considering that it's only halfway through December and you have to factor in two more weeks, I think it's very feasible that the Nintendo Switch could have potentially sold over 600,000 units during that time frame. If not, it's obviously neck and neck with the Nintendo 3DS. And when you look at the Nintendo 3DS, this is a completely different system. This system was available on the marketplace for roughly eight years. It originally launched back in 2011 and then of course it had a long life cycle until about 2019. You have to factor in all the different variants of the Nintendo 3DS as well such as the 2DS which was a budget entry point for the system and they did the 2DS XL, there was the 3DS, the 3DS XL, all these sort of revamps for this system but in eight years it managed to sell about 75.7 million systems. In half of the time the Nintendo Switch has sold 
5.125. Like, holy crap on a stick. And it was really sort of a down year for Nintendo. Yes, Animal Crossing was a huge phenomenon. And of course, Animal Crossing brought in a lot of new players. But if you were like a diehard Switch player, you know, it was a bit of a quiet year compared to years past. So the fact that the Nintendo Switch in only half of the time on the marketplace is now neck and neck with the Nintendo 3DS and the 3DS family of systems is just absolutely incredible. There were a lot of people wondering, well, could the Nintendo Switch hit 100 million units sold, you know, in its complete life cycle? But I think it's going to hit that in 2021, especially if the software is there and the potential for a Nintendo Switch Pro that a lot of people feel, myself included, is going to come in 2021 because then you got people that already own a Nintendo Switch, such as myself, wanting to purchase another system for these additional features, whatever the Nintendo Switch Pro brings to the table, if it does indeed come out, which I do think it will. So I think it's well within the realm of possibility that Nintendo could exceed 100 million units sold in 2021 alone. And that will only be the fourth year it's on the marketplace. So it's just absolutely incredible to see this rebound from Nintendo because when you look at, you know, the 3DS, it got a very sluggish start and then it, you know, sort of picked up, but it never was a $300 system. Whereas the Switch is a $300 system, unless you're talking about the Switch Lite, which is a $200 system. Of course, the Wii U was a complete failure. So Nintendo has really rebounded from this. It's going to be a very exciting year for them in 2021. And I just hope they bring the goods because right now they are riding this momentum. They're riding this high with system sales because it's the best selling system on the market, even with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X coming out due to the supply constraints of those systems with the abundance of the Nintendo Switch on the marketplace. So now you got all these new people into your system. You got to bring them the games. But I think this is absolutely incredible to see that the Nintendo Switch is now neck and neck in just half the time with the Nintendo 3DS. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Did Amazon fool you into thinking that Metroid Prime 4 was coming out in 2023 and had a release date? Or did you know about placeholders? Because a lot of people don't know about placeholders. Phil Spencer, future of Xbox. Are you tired of hearing about the future? Do you want to know about the present with the system? Or are you fine with, you know, learning about the future of the system and hoping that these things come to fruition in the Nintendo Switch? I mean, what can you really say about the system? themselves of it and as always guys thank you for checking out this video i hope you guys have a great 2021 we're starting this year out with a video of course because that's what i do i like to talk about video game stuff and give you guys information and give you guys my opinions on stuff and as always guys i'll catch you guys on the next video later